Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we have a brand new multi pump PCP in 25 caliber from Air Venturi, the Seneca Aspen. So the Aspen was announced in 2018 actually, and this 25 caliber version was announced at SHOT Show 2019. So kind of updating the 177 and 22 offering that are actually already available online now. Now we were gonna review a 22, but we had the opportunity to give you guys kind of a first look at the 25 here. So I was very interested to see how this performs compared to the 177s and 22s that I've already tried. There are a lot of features here in the Aspen. So let's start at the front as we always do. We have a fully shrouded rifled barrel. Now inside of the shroud, there are not any baffles. Now I have personally put some baffles in there to see if it helps quiet it down at all. The gun's pretty quiet from the factory and it honestly doesn't make too much of a difference. So uh, something to know, it's about as quiet as it's gonna get and it's not really loud, uh, but we'll obviously get that over the sound meter for you guys out at the range. And dropping down below the shroud, we have our air cylinder, and you'll notice the air cylinder is very thin on this gun, and that is because you have the onboard pump here at your disposal to keep the gun aired up. We'll talk about filling the gun here in just a minute, but let's hit some of the other features. We do, of course, have a barrel band keeping everything nice and secure, and you'll notice on the side here we do have a rotating swivel stud to match a swivel stud at the back of the stock for those of you that are going to be toting this gun around and might want to sling. And you'll of course notice that the Aspen has a full synthetic stock, which does have some texturing on the forend as well as the grip area. Pretty comfortable stock. I have no gripes with it myself so far using it. Uh, and of course the pump arm kind of drops down here to give you a little, uh, like a nice offhand palm shelf on the gun, which I like from a standing shot perspective. It's actually pretty comfortable to bring into the shoulder. Nice little feature there as well. The stock ends in a rubber butt pad and you do have an ambidextrous raised cheek piece here as well, molded in. And talking about the breech, there are a lot of things going on here on the breech. You of course have your pressure gauge, which is really important on this gun because as you shoot, you're actually going to see it move in pretty significant increments. Now we'll show you that when we get out onto the range, but that's going to be important because you want to know where you're at when you pump this thing back up. You don't want to pump more than you need to. And also you don't want to shoot to a point where you get outside of that usable pressure range of this gun. Now, as it says on the breech, you have a 3600 PSI max fill pressure, so 250 bar for those of you dealing in European units. And of course, you have a side lever action, which is nice and smooth, kind of have this long lever here, which is actually really nice to grip down. It's not a very hard cocking effort, works very well. And with the gun, you are going to get a single shot tray. Now, yours is going to be black. This is actually a prototype one that they had to send with this gun. Uh, and then an eight round magazine, basically a Marauder gauntlet style mag, and those will work. I can and confirm that for you now. And just below your cocking lever, we do have a hunter style safety that is easy to flip on and off. Uh, it's actually in the shape of a pellet, a little copper pellet here, uh, which is uh, kind of a nice touch, I guess. It's a little weird, but uh, it's, it's all right. You get the red dot when you're good and hot. Uh, and since we've already cocked the gun, we can go ahead and decock it just by holding that lever back pulling that trigger and letting it go forward. Pretty easy to do. And flipping the gun around here on the other side of the breech, we do actually have a two-step power adjuster. So this is a transfer port adjustment like we see on the Air Arms guns. You have a high and a low setting, very easy. And of course, we'll test it, see what it does to shot count and of course, power. On top of the breech, you have an 11 millimeter dovetail. Now the rifle does come with a four x 32 adjustable objective scope with a milled out reticle. Not a bad scope option, but for our testing, since we're purely paper punching here to see the gun's accuracy, I went with a Mantis 4 to 12, a budget friendly scope and would be a good option if you're looking for something with a little bit more magnification. Did mount it in some high rings here. Uh, just know that if you do have a larger than 44 millimeter objective bell scope, you are definitely going to want to go with high rings on that. And you may also need them to clear the magazine depending on the saddle height of your scope as well. Last thing I want to hit on before we talk about filling this gun here, you do have a hammer spring tension adjustment at the back of the action here. Simple Allen key adjustment, you put it in there and you're able to turn it clockwise, counterclockwise. Just know that that is going to allow you to play with the velocity of your gun a little bit for your chosen pellet, uh, but it may have an impact on shot count and how many shots you're getting before you have to pump this guy up again. So keep that in mind as you adjust. 
Now dropping down to the trigger, we do have a two-stage adjustable trigger. Out of the box, feels like it's about three pounds, but a nice clean first, second stage wall, uh, and it's breaking nice and crisp for me. So I have no complaints with the trigger so far out of the box, but of course we'll test it for you as well. And then just in front of that, you'll notice this locking mechanism. Now what that is, is a pump lockout. So right now this is in the locked configuration and it will actually keep you from opening the pump arm. So we're gonna press that on through and you see it pop out on the other side there. That's gonna allow us to go ahead and open this pump arm now. This is really the meat and potatoes of the gun, guys. This is why this gun is significant. Uh, an inexpensive PCP, we've seen this before. An inexpensive PCP with a built-in onboard pump, that's, well, it's a game changer, all right? So this is what makes this gun significant, that onboard pump. Now, one of the things I do wanna show you while we have this open here, now don't worry, if you don't wanna fill this with the pump, you don't have to. You actually have a little cover here for your fill port comes with a probe and this is actually has a quick disconnect machined onto it so nice little stick probe here that you're going to insert into that hole and then you can air it up with your tank or for whatever reason if you were crazy enough to use a secondary pump to fill a gun with a pump on it you could do that too now my recommendation for those of you out there that have accessory fill equipment if you have a tank go ahead and fill this with the probe and your tank beforehand. Get it up to that 36 pressure and then use the pump arm to keep yourself topped up. That would be the way I would do it and that's how we've done it so far. Talking about the pumping effort, this is actually, in my opinion, easier to pump than a hand pump is, especially when you get to high pressure. I can pump this all the way to 3600 PSI doing just this right here at a lower effort then I can do it with a hand pump. Now I'm not actually gonna fill it all the way in front of you guys, but I can tell you it takes about 80 strokes, or at least for this gun, it took about 80 strokes to fill it from empty with just the pump arm. So it can be done. It's not exactly the most fun thing in the world, but you can do it if you have to, if you don't have other fill equipment. And that's really the beauty of this gun. It has everything you need with PCP accuracy, quiet, all the features with an onboard pump. This is a one-time cost gun. And I love that. This is like the Springer or the multi-pump of the PCP world because it has everything built in that you need. Now that we've run you through the features, we're gonna head out to the range. Today we're gonna start on the chronograph though. That's gonna be really important for this gun. We need to figure out what our pressure range is that's usable before we go ahead and extend our range and see what kind of accuracy the Aspen can produce. Aspen. So before we go ahead and put this on paper at 45 yards to see what kind of accuracy it's producing, I need to figure out what my usable range is from a pressure perspective. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot an entire chronograph string. Now it's gonna be pretty short because the onboard cylinder on this gun is very small. So what I'm gonna try and determine here is between what pressure ranges on that gauge I need to keep the pressure between to get my most consistent results. So let's see what happens over the chronograph. We decided to test with the JSB King 25-4s. They performed well in our pre-testing, so figured that was our best option here. And they're running right above 800 feet per second, producing about 37 foot-pounds. And as you can see, I'm getting four or five shots here within 10 to 20 feet per second. And so that's really telling me I have to keep this in a nice tight range. So I'm gonna take three shots, pump it up, so I can keep it as close to that, you know, 800 to 805 mark as I can for all five of these shots for the group. On my gauge right now, I've taken eight shots and I'm at about 2,400 PSI. So I know I need to keep this between roughly like 3,300 and 2,500 to get good consistent shots. Now, because that only amounts to four shots or so, I'm gonna take three and I'm gonna pump up like eight or 10 times to keep this thing topped up as we're shooting. And that's really the whole point of the Aspen here. It's a self-regulated PCP, meaning that you as the person pumping it and filling it are regulating it as you're shooting. So with the Aspen in 25 caliber at 45 yards, we did all five shot groups as we showed you guys over the chronograph on that high power setting. 
We're getting three to four good shots and then I'm gonna pump up a couple times, make sure it stays within that good usable pressure range, get my fourth and my fifth shot typically. So that was for every group, same procedure, all fired from the magazine. Starting with the H&N Barracudas out there at 45 yards, uh, 1.1 inch group had this one gonna go on me a little bit, but not a bad pellet certainly. Uh, didn't seem too pellet picky as we were going along. Also the Predator Poly Mags grouping in there right about an inch, so a solid hunting option, especially at closer range. This is gonna be a very devastating pellet on live game. Uh, then coming in at three quarters of an inch, the uh, King Heavies, those JSBs at 33.9s. Now we did also try the Mark IIs. They didn't group as well, not sure why, but the standard King Heavies were definitely better. Uh, but the best one of all, the standard Kings from JSB, five eighths of an inch, about 0.6. This is a dime size group there, 45 yards out of the Aspen, good stuff. Now we're gonna go take it over the chronograph on low power and show you guys what you can expect from a shot count and an energy perspective. Aspen. Testing on low power with the JSB King 25 fours, the Aspen here in 25 caliber is doing about 17 foot pounds of energy off of a full fill. Now I really want you guys to key in on those first 10 shots because you're going from about 550 feet per second down to about 535 or so. So you're within 20 feet per second. So you're gonna get good enough consistency with the velocities to maintain good accuracy. And that's really what we're looking for here. So for those of you that are doing close range pest elimination or even some target shooting, you know, low power is gonna be a much more conservative and easy to use setting for you. And it's gonna keep you from pumping all the time like high power is. Aspen. The Seneca Aspen in 25 caliber, uh, questionable name to be honest with you, but solid performance, quiet gun, decent power, about 36, 37 foot pounds, uh, dime size accuracy, obviously out at 45 yards. And for a gun in this price point, that's really all you can ask for. It's got a solid trigger that's fully adjustable, comes with a scope that's gonna be usable for you hunters out there. Although personally for me, I upgraded it. You've got hammer spring tension adjustment, the transfer port adjustment, magazine fed, single shot tray, the ability to fill it with the onboard pump, or a tank of course. Uh, this thing doesn't lack for features and for the money you're talking about, if you are a hunter, a prepper, uh, or just somebody likes having a gun by the door ready to go, this is a great option uh, that fills a void right now in the market, an affordable entry level option that doesn't require you to purchase extra fill equipment. That's where the Aspen comes in. So if you're on the verge of getting into PCPs, you want that super nice accuracy without having to buy all the extra equipment, boom, here's your answer, guys. Take a look at the Aspen in a little bit more detail on pyramidair.com right now. For the insider, I'm Tyler Patner. We appreciate you guys joining us today as always. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you at the next one.